So this is Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword running on Dolphin Emulator in 4K with 4K texture packs and I'm using my Xbox controller to control it, swashbuckling away with my sword with the accuracy of a Wii Motion Plus. It is absolutely fantastic and I'm going to show you how to do that in today's video. And here I am flying around flawlessly with the control screen that I've set up which I think is actually much better than the Nintendo Switch Skyward Sword HD version as well. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to get Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword from looking like this to this and give you the perfect control scheme for the Xbox controller. Now, before we begin, I hate doing this kind of thing, so I'll be quick, but 99% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel and I understand why. You get the information you need and you don't need me again. So I'm not going to ask you to subscribe, although it will help. But I am going to ask you to hit the like button if you find the information useful. Sorry to be that guy. Let's get back to the tutorial. So the first thing I'm going to look at are the controls. And in the description down below, there is going to be a .ini file that you can download and just copy to Dolphin Emulator. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. So in your documents folder on your PC, there will be a Dolphin Emulator folder that's created by Dolphin. Double click on that. And then you're going to want to find the config folder. Double click on that. And then go into the profile section, double click on that, double click on Wiimotes, that will be GC if you have any saved GameCube ones as well. Double click on Wiimotes and then this is where you copy the TCS SkywardSword.ini. Then you go back to Dolphin and you go to Controllers and where it says emulate the Wii's Bluetooth adapter, you can use the Wii Remote one, emulate his Wii Remote, click Configure and then you click down here it will have my tcs skyward sword if it doesn't close and open dolphin again or click refresh first we need to set our device so by default it's set to d input keyboard and mouse but we need to set it to x input gamepad for the xbox controller there's a couple of other ones here but i much prefer to use the x input gamepad one if your controller isn't showing click the refresh button and it should show up this also works for playstation 4 and playstation 5 controllers but you're going to have to input the settings yourself and I'm going to go through them in a second. So go to profile, go to the bit where it says TCS Skyward Sword, click on that, click load and all the controls should just be set up exactly as I set them up. If for whatever reason that isn't the case, I'm going to show you how to do it myself. So let's clear every control and let's get to setting this up. So in the button section, we're going to go to click on A, left click on A, and then press A, and that is going to assign A to the A button. So if I press the A button, it will go black there, and as you can see on the gamepad at the bottom left of my screen, I am pressing A. For the B button, I will use the right trigger because it was on the back of the Wiimote. So if I click B and then press the right trigger, it will assign the right trigger to it, and when I press the right trigger, it will go black. One and two are mainly used to bring up menus in the game, so I set them to X and Y respectively. So I click one, press X, two press y and if you're on the ps4 or ps5 controller a is x right trigger is r2 x is square and y is triangle then for the minus button i set that to select or the back button on the xbox controller and then the plus button i set it to start for the d-pad i set that up as the d-pad on the controller so up click down click left click right up, down, left, right on the D-pad. Then we go to the extension section here. Click on extension and click nunchuck because we need the nunchuck. And then make sure that attach motion plus is ticked. For the rumble motors, this is for obviously vibration and rumble. We click motor and it'll bring up this menu here. So we click motor L, press select. Go to operators, click R. Go click motor R, press select. And then just test it to see if it works and my motor rumble is working okay and that's everything that we need from this page then we go to the motion simulation so this is obviously where you're going to simulate the motion on the wiimote so for shake shake is used to do the spin attack so i set that to r1 so i press x shoulder r y RT or R1 if you're on PlayStation and Z I set all of these to R so now when I press it just to check that it's working in this little square box here if I press R it'll shake and move point this is the actual pointer so I'm going to set this to the right analog stick so I press up and up on the right analog stick down 
down on the right analog stick, left, left on the right analog stick, right, right on the right analog stick. And there's not really anything else you need to put here except for perhaps the dead zone because my controller, as you can see, it is not perfectly in the center. So what I do is I open the dead zone to cover where my red dot is. And it just, it just stops a lot of the stick drift from drifting into the game as well. Tilt, now this is where the magic happens because all of these controls are to do with flying in the game. So when I tilt the remotes to the left, the bird goes to the left and I tilt it to the right, the bird goes to the right. Forwards, he does a nose dive. Backwards, he pulls up. So we set these to the left analog stick. So left, I use the left analog stick to the left and right, I use the right analog stick to the right. Now forwards and backwards will actually have an issue with the game. Whenever you try and run, you will stab and jab your sword. So I set this to the D-pad. I set forwards to up on the D-pad. So whenever I need to do a forward dive, I press up on the D-pad. And then backwards, you'd think you'd press it to down on the D-pad. But because down already has an action in the game, when you press down, you dive off your bird. So I'm going to set that to right on the D-pad. Swing is where we swing and swash and swashbuckle our sword around. So this one is very important to the game. So up, up on the right analog stick, down, down on the right analog stick, left, left on the right analog stick, and right, right on the right analog stick. So up, down, left, right, all on the right analog stick, and this will simulate the movement of the sword. Forward is the stabbing motion. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to click that, and I'm going to sign that to the right analog stick in. So whenever we push the right analog stick in, Link is going to do a stabbing motion. The motion input section, we leave this one blank. This is all gyroscopes and accelerometers, and we don't have any motion device sensors. This is mainly designed for motion sensor hardware. So we move over to the extension, which will be the nunchuck. And this is where we assign our movement. So up here will be up on the left analog stick, down, down on the left analog stick, left, left on the left analog stick, right, right on the right analog stick. And the dead zone, again, we're going to set that up because as you can see here, my stick doesn't really go straight to the center. That's because it is a very old controller and it does have some stick drift. So I just move the Z zone up. It's going to 20, 19, 20%. We'll go with 20% here. And you can see the circle around it means that it won't be wandering off while I'm playing the game. The C button, which is the look button in the game to zoom in and look around, I set that to the left analog stick in. And the Z button, which is the targeting button, I set that to the left trigger or L2 if you're on PlayStation. Now I know on the Nintendo Switch version, they set the C button to the L1, but I much prefer to have that as my shield bash, as you'll see in a second. So if we go to the extension motion simulation, we go to the shake of the nunchuck. And I sign that to L1 or shoulder L or LB as it's called on the Xbox. So X, Y and Z are set to the LB button. And tilt and swing, we do not need them within the game because this is just the tilt and swing of the nunchuck. And the final one, extension motion input, we do nothing here because once again, this is designed for motion sensor hardware, which we do not have. And that's everything for the control side of things. And I'll just pop into the game and show you how to use those controls now. So let's take a look at some of these controls in action. So if I press LT or left L2, that will be the lock on. And I can jump around with A and do a backflip because Link loves to do his backflips. And then with the right analog stick, I can switch it from left to right. From right to left, up, down, and then if I want to do a little poke, give a little poke. And if I want to charge my Master Sword up, I hold the right analog stick up. And eventually it gets there. Sometimes it can be a bit finicky, but it's charged up nice and charged. And there we go. Also, if I press the left analog stick in, I can do the look around. But I have to be careful when using the right analog stick, because if I... Do that and then just swing it around it's going to simulate the swing from before so i have to be extra careful when doing that and then to do a roll i have to hold dash and press l1 and there you see lb he's doing his nice little roll he's about to run out of breath and then to get the shield up press lb got my shield up 
and spin attack. I hold LB and RB together. He does his spin attack. So let's take to the sky and do some flying. Now, I much prefer this flying setup to the one on the Nintendo Switch. So if I move left and right on my analog stick, I am going to move left and right. If I want to get some altitude, I move the right analog stick up and down to flap my wings, which is beautiful. And then if I want to do a nose dive, I press up on the D-pad and he goes into a nose dive. If I want to do a little bit of, whoa there, Sally, I press right on the D-pad. And I can also press B to slow down as well. And if I want to dive off, I just press down on the D-pad as well. And he dives off. So I much prefer this actual flying setup to the one that's on the Nintendo Switch. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Now here's one of the downsides to using Dolphin over the Nintendo Switch version is that all the menus rely on motion controls and you have to use the right analog stick to move it around and it's not it's not the best. It is not you've got to be very 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 careful and very precise with your movements to get where you need to be. It is quite annoying but it's not an actual deal breaker. I do prefer the Nintendo Switch on that side of things. Menu control is much better on the Nintendo Switch version. Okay, so now we've got the controls out of the way, let's get into the graphics. So first I'm gonna take off everything that I've got set up here and bring it back to the default settings. And then I'm gonna unload these custom texture packs. And you can see here exactly how it looks without the custom texture packs and in standard native resolution. So the first thing we do is we go to the graphics tab in Dolphin. And it brings to this general section. Now you see for my back end, I'm using Direct 3D 12, which is probably my favorite one so far. You can use Direct 3D 11. I wouldn't recommend using OpenGL, but if you have Vulkan, then you can use Vulkan. It, it entirely depends on your machine, your GPU, your CPU, which is going to be the best for you. And it also depends on the game. So far, I am loving Direct 3D 12. That's my personal preference, and it's entirely up to you which back end you choose as long as you've got a dedicated graphics card. As you can see, I've got an RTX 3060 laptop GPU version. If you've got one that's better than this, then great, you're gonna get much better results than I am. If you've got one lower than this, you might not get the same results and you might have to turn a few things down. Now, shader compilation is usually set to specialized by default, but I prefer hybrid Uber shaders. Specialized is going to have a little bit of stuttering going, but if your GPU isn't powerful enough, you're not gonna be able to use hybrid Uber shaders. Now, exclusive Uber shaders is the big daddy one, which is going to cost a lot of GPU performance. But I prefer the hybrid version of Uber shaders because it does kind of prevent the stuttering a lot more. It eliminates a lot of the stuttering and has like a minimal performance impact. I also click compile shaders before starting. So that means before the game, any shaders that have already been compiled before that are in the system, it is going to compile them and the game's going to run a lot smoother as well. Enhancements. We're going from native all the way to 4K. Even though this video probably isn't going to be in 4K, I cannot render 4K video at the same time as playing it in 4K. It is neon impossible with my GPU. But just know that the internal resolution is set to 4K. Anti-aliasing, I banged that up to four times MSAA, which is the minimum that my GPU can actually put out. So what I did was I went through from eight times SAAA, which gave me 15 frames per second, all the way down to two times SAAA, which still give me 15 to 25 frames per second. And I just went down and down until I found the sweet spot, which was four times MSAA. You don't need anti-aliasing. I just like it and I prefer it. You can have this set to none and still have a great experience. And then anisotropic filtering. Once again, I've tested this from one all the way to 16 and it's had no effect on my game it may have an effect on your game. So you need to change it to whatever it is that gives you the best frames per second. And the best frames per second is 30 frames per second for this game. Link does not look happy there. Arbitrary mipmap detection, that needs to be on. Make sure that is enabled. And the other one you can try out is per pixel lighting. I put this on because it does have a smoothing effect and I do like it and it has no effect on my GPU. So I might as well have it on. But if you are having some slowdowns, it might be the per pixel lighting, although it does rarely 
have any effects on the game other than just smoothing things out. One of the important ones to have on this game is force texture filtering on because the effect that this have is that the pointer on the screen is going to be in sync. If you have it off, the pointer is not going to be in sync. Hacks, I put skip EFB access from CPU and ignore format changes. I click both of them on. If they're in black, there is generally they generally need to be on or off. If you're having any issues, switch off. Simple as. But these two will make the game run faster on certain GPUs and CPUs. And then in the advanced section, I click show FPS, show percentage speed, show VPS. And then also I click load custom textures. And then I click prefetch custom textures as well. Because that will fetch them into the system RAM. And we won't be loading them as the game goes on. As you can see in the left corner here, it says custom textures loaded. 2 gigabytes in 3.9 seconds. So it's not a long process to load these in. But what do the custom textures do and where do you get them from? Well, if you take a look at this UI system, this is the main thing I like custom textures for. Although they do add some nice colors and it really is a kind of subjective thing. It's not one is not better than the other and it is entirely up to you if you use these or not. But if I go to the graphics and I unload the custom textures and then I don't know if you can see this, but the UI itself isn't as clear as it is when I click load custom textures. When I load them in, some of the shadows look different, some of the textures in the background look different. I don't know if you can tell on this screen, but I much prefer some custom texture packs are great, some aren't. Now, the ones that I'm using for today's video is from Henrico Magnifico, who has done quite a few different texture packs in the past. He's done Luigi's Mansion, and he does release them for free on Patreon. You can become a Patreon, but you don't have to. But if you are a patron, you get access to them a month early. So I'm going to leave a link in the description to this Skyward Sword one. And if you just scroll down, it'll be the first one that comes up. Zelda Skyward Sword 4K Texture Pack. And then there's a lot of talk here. We scroll down. We need to find a bit that says download the texture pack here. Download the texture pack. And it'll bring you to a Google Drive. And we need to find the one that is for 4K. So if we change it to list view by clicking in the top right here grid layout to list layout we have 4k now if you want to play in 1080p because your gpu isn't like good enough download these 1080p ones or if you want to play on android or ios there's options for that as well so you right click and then you just click download download anyway as you can see i've already downloaded them before and that little warning was just saying that uh it's a big file and it may contain viruses and it's entirely up to you if you want to download it. I take no responsibility for anything that you download. You don't have to do it. It's entirely up to you. You see, this one is going to take 10 minutes. So I'm just going to go to the one that I've already downloaded and show you. So inside this zip folder is a bunch of things you can ignore pretty much. You can click the standard edition, which is what I did. And it has its own personal version of Dolphin to that set up everything. But I ignore this as well. I go to the part where it says user, click user. And then we find the bit that says load and then textures, double click on all this till we get to the one that says SOU, then right click, copy. Then you go to the documents folder and you find the dolphin emulator folder from before, click dolphin emulator, click load and then click textures and then right click and paste this in. Once that folder's in, double click just to make sure there are all the textures and your game should update itself or you might need to restart the game to start playing but that's everything that you need to play legend of zelda skyward sword in 4k with an xbox controller and is it worth it i hear you asking what's the difference between this and the legend of zelda skyward sword hd on the nintendo switch well, if you don't have the Nintendo Switch, then you can play it like this. I'm going to run these side by side. And as you can see, I'm in the exact same spot on my Nintendo Wii version. And I'm in the exact same spot on my Skyward Sword version. I kind of like the way the colors pop a bit on the H the 4K version, as we're going to call it from now on. I'm just going to run around in both of them, try and get to the same spots. Just let you have a little look, look CC here. I can't control two at the same time, so I'm probably going to die. But you kind of get the picture there. That's it for this video. If you've liked this video, then please hit that like button. If you found this information useful, subscribe to the channel. Let me know down in the comments what dolphin type 
tutorials you would like. I've been playing with Dolphin now for at least six to seven years. I know Dolphin like the back of my hand. It's the one emulator I play the most out of any. I'm going to get stuck into Skyward Sword and actually finally complete it. Still not sure whether I'm going to use the Nintendo Switch version or this version. I think I'm going to use this version just so that I can check to see if my control system has any flaws. Until then, have a fantastic 2023. And remember, don't do anything I wouldn't do.